artist. Tell me a bit about the backstory, how you met the artist, um, mm -hmm. and why you chose her for your piece. Yeah, well, I love Maya Rusnik's paintings, obviously, as you see in the piece I wrote. I first saw her work in an art collector's house, a collector who collects my work. That was my first introduction, maybe 10 years ago. Saw her work a little bit online every now and then, but she was living in Los Angeles and I'm in Brooklyn. We didn't really cross paths until about five years ago. I visited her studio. She and her partner, Josh Hagler and Shiri Mordechai, three artists, all downtown LA space at that time. And I got to see her paintings and they were different then. Like they were very um, uh, bright colored, a little bit more like energy to them, a different painting. Um, I thought they were interesting, but the work's evolved a lot since then. So that was maybe five years ago, met her quickly in her studio. And then, you know, in this Instagram age, when the artists are all kind of sharing their work online and so, so forth, I started to see her new work in the course of this last year, maybe last year or two, and was very intrigued and captivated by what I was seeing on the Instagram in a way that I knew I needed to see them in person when I would have a chance because they had like a very mysterious quality to them. I think a lot of stuff when you see it on the screen, like you can kind of tell what kind of painting it is, but these really had a mysterious quality to them. They seemed kind of smoky and atmospheric and I couldn't really tell what was going on. They're kind of haunting images, but always stop me when I'm scrolling through the, the scroll. Um, and I had, listened to a podcast with Maya, uh, Artist Decoded, last winter, right around the same time that you invited me to select an artist for this book. So she was instantly the choice I had in mind. Um, so I knew I was interested, but after listening to the podcast, there were certain things she said, actually the title for this piece, um, A Net for Catching the Ghosts, that's a line that she said in that podcast that just really resonated with me. I thought it was really smart, a really intriguing concept for like what the process of painting can, can be and what it is. Um, so I was really intrigued in seeing her paintings, but at the same time, um, she's still out West. Now they, they live in New Mexico, um, but I'm in New York. I didn't know how I could see her paintings, but then I, uh, reached out to Karma Gallery and they set up a viewing for me and I was able to spend some good quality time alone with these four paintings which are in the piece and just really get, have a really rich viewing experience and just really sink into them and came up with uh, some words, you know. No, it was beautiful. You know what? Atmospheric and haunting. That's the perfect word to describe mm -hmm. how that feeling I got reading it too. Mm, nice, thank you. You know, the images are always more flat than the real painting, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Her paintings are they're um, incredibly soft in person, and they feel, like I said, atmospheric, but something very sort of otherworldly about their presence, or like mist has kind of condensed onto the canvas, much less as if it's been applied by a brush. Like you, I don't, you don't see brush strokes so much. It also doesn't look like it's been poured on or airbrushed on or any of the typical ways that someone would make a painting. There's something very, very kind of distinctive and singular about the presence that these paintings have. And the process is a mystery, mystery to me. I haven't asked her that, that much about it. So I'm really curious actually about that as well. I think that would be very interesting to find out, mm -hmm. especially because um, you also paint. Yeah. And I'm Definitely. looking forward to seeing your work, especially if you have a show in Hong Kong next year. Yeah, there That's should great. be one next year, yeah. OTI in 2021 in Hong Kong. <laughs> so when, so in writing about her works, um, did it help you reflect on your own practice at all? Did, it, did you find that even just embracing her paintings and did it influence you? Sure, in a way. And there's certain certain concepts that she's that she's interested in that I'm also interested in. And I think obviously that's why I was um, drawn to her work and interested in writing about her work in the beginning. Um, like the idea that we can kind of connect with 
otherworldly forces or maybe spirits when we're painting, something that she talked about in the podcast that I've listened to of her. Um, and it's something I'm curious about. I, I think I can get myself also into kind of a meditative state when I'm painting and allow things to come in that feel like mysterious forces. Um, her paintings and my paintings look quite different in most ways, but there are also some some commonalities. Like I think I have some like misty sort of ghostly figures in my work as well. Um, yeah, and I was also interested in the connection to Hilma off Clint in her work, whose work I saw at the Guggenheim, a uh, really kind of groundbreaking show, um, a survey of her work, and she was um, such an important artist who wasn't really known in her time and wanted her work to be saved for the, for the future. And she was someone who was a spiritualist and was intentionally communing with spirits and even reading her writings about her work, she felt that her her hand was moved by spirits and it wasn't really her making the work as much as channeling. So I think Maya's work evokes that kind of an idea as well. And I think sometimes in my work, I'm interested in trying to find that kind of a psychological space of what that would be and um, kind of embracing like the mystery of that. I saw um, Hilma's work when I was in Stockholm last year. Oh, nice. There is something magical in it. Absolutely. They had yeah. um, almost half a room dedicated to her. And that was Amazing. like a permanent gallery hang. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I, I'm happy to see like her works are coming up around the world again and people are paying attention. Yeah, absolutely. There's a new documentary on her as well. I haven't I seen heard. it yet. Uh, neither mm -hmm. have I. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have but, you done um, much writing before? I always write about my own work a little bit, um, but I really, I really love this process. I, I would like to be, you know, have more opportunities to do this in the future. I think that the best thing about it was being able to go to a viewing room and be alone in the room with these, these four paintings and just have a notebook and be there for alone for like 30, 45 minutes and just look at the works, have observations, feel the feelings, write them down, and then to try to, um, try to capture that experience I had in front of the works in, in writing. Um, you know, it's very different from going to a crowded gallery where you might be gallery hopping and spend like a few minutes here, a few minutes there, chatting with friends or people. It's very different from scrolling through Instagram or looking online. It was really, really great way to experience the works. and. I'm so happy to have this experience and happy to have the challenge actually of, of writing about it as well. I think you did an amazing job. It translated uh, incredibly you. well. Thank you so much. It really felt like, yeah, reading it, it really felt like you were with the painting. Oh, that's great. Well, I was with the paintings <laughs> and I tried to uh, get that there in the words. I mean, the, the paintings that have, they stick with you. You know, the, the one... Um, there's one, The Undoer of Knots, one of her paintings. It's just like such a haunting image. And at the same time, it's such a pleasant image. It's like a sunny kind of impressionist kind of a feel. It has feels like a landscape, but it doesn't look like a landscape. There's a figure that's kind of writhing in pain or turmoil, like seems like it's trying to almost like escape from the wheel of the canvas and it's, it comes and goes like you can stand in, in front of the painting and not see the figure and then you could focus on the figure and it's there it's like a shifting space between what's there and what's not and it's they're they're incredible pieces well thank you so much for taking part in this project absolutely I'm thanks so for excited having to me have you. thanks for having me i'm excited to read all the essays by all the other artists as well.